Hello everyone, I'm back with another Reddit Addicts episode. If you find my videos entertaining, please kindly subscribe and like them. Thanks to everyone for your suggestions and kind notes. Now, let's get started with today's exciting stories. My wife three years cheated with her boss. So I filed her with divorce papers. Me 32M and wife 30F have been married for three years together for five years. We live in Colombo, Sri Lanka, at the moment. My wife's boss is 36 married with two kids. So the story starts with her cheating on me with her boss, when we were having a relationship. I caught her going to a hotel room with her boss. One of my friends work there, and he took photos of them. I immediately confronted her, and she denied it saying I'm crazy. Then I showed the photos, and she finally admitted to cheating. This happened when we were having a relationship for around one year. I immediately broke up with her and blocked her number, social media, etc. But after two weeks, she came to see me and was begging to start our relationship. She said it was a mistake, she wasn't thinking straight. And she was stressed with her work and said everyone deserves a second chance. So I was dumb enough to give her a second chance and started the relationship again. But I set up some rules like checking her phone whenever I want, keeping an eye on her and asking to stop all chatting and calls with her boss unless it is work-related. She agreed and everything went well. We got married in 2019. And everything was so perfect until last year, December. Last year, December my wife got a promotion at work. And she said she wants to give her boss a dinner treat for that. We argued a lot about this. And she blamed me for my insecurity. She said that I should trust her because I didn't see any suspicious activity so far after the first time of cheating back in 2018. So she organized the dinner in one of the most luxury hotels here. Most people go there for romantic dinners to propose, etc. And it was a candlelight dinner. And I said I'm not feeling comfortable with that. She again blamed me and full of insecurity and promised me nothing will happen. She took a day off from work on that dinner treat day and went to salon in the afternoon to do her eyebrows and a facial. She usually do this before a wedding or any special party. So at this point, I felt something is going on and she selected a more open and revealing dress. But I didn't have too much argument about that. Because she already blamed several times saying I'm insecure. She went to the dinner, and I asked to get back by 10 p.m. She wasn't home by 10 p.m. So I decided to call her, and she did not answer the phone. I called her several times, and she didn't answer the phone. She returned back at 2 a.m. I was so mad and asked why she didn't answer the phone. What took it so long, etc. In a very angry way. She very calmly said don't freak out. We went for a walk after dinner and just had a friendly talk. I didn't believe it for a second but couldn't do anything about it either. So I just slided past. This year, January my wife said she has to go to the Maldives with her boss for a business meeting with a potential client and said she has to stay there for five days. I went crazy. As soon as I heard this, and we started fighting. She started to blame me again saying I'm full of insecurity. And I'm crazy that I don't have a proper social life. I've been WFH since the pandemic started. She went on a business trip and everything felt okay for the first three days. At least I felt okay not sure about what happened there. But after day three, I didn't get any calls from her or couldn't call her. It said that she is out of the coverage area. At this point, I lost all faith in my wife and knew something is probably going on. After she returned I asked what happened after day three. And she said that the client had a private resort in a separate island. And he invited them there and said there's no reception on that island. I asked for more details about this resort and island. 
and she said she doesn't remember anything because the client organized everything and they just got on a boat and went there. Edit. Thank you guys all for all the tips and suggestions. So I decided to go for the divorce and I left home for four days to spend some time alone in a beach resort. I always go wrote a letter to her and left it in home asking for divorce and just some stuff about her boss and her. I gave her four days to pack her stuff and go find a new place for her. And when I'm back, I'll start by meeting the lawyer. She called me like 10 times now and I didn't answer at first but finally decided to talk with her because she kept calling me. I will do a detailed post soon. Thanks a lot again. Update. So the day before yesterday, I took one week off from work and booked a hotel for four days and left home with a letter to her. In the letter. I said that I know you're ducking your boss again. And I know everything happened at the dinner and the five days business trip actually, I don't end some stuff and that I have decided to go for divorce. Also, I gave her three days to pack her stuff and go find a new place for her. I switched off my phone when I left the home because I didn't want her to bother me with her endless calls while driving. I went to the hotel checked in, switched on my phone and bang 13 missed calls and messages were flooding. I just scrolled the messages, had a look and didn't reply. She called me sometime after I answered, and she was crying, saying sorry for what she did and told me we can still fix this. I'm tired after a long drive and not in the mood to talk. So I asked her to call tomorrow and hang up the phone. She asked for the hotel I'm at so she can come and talk to me in person. But I said I don't want to see you. She called me again yesterday, and we talked for two hours. I asked her, do you admit to cheating with your boss? And her answer was I can explain everything. Please let me see you and explain everything. And I asked, did you duck your boss on that dinner date? And again, her answer was the same. This went on for several other questions I asked and I got mad and yelled at her. Come on for once at least be honest and answer my ducking questions. Then she said it all happened last December. She wanted to get the promotion so she had a deal with her boss. She gets the promotion and her boss gets to duck her once. And she promised nothing happened from 2018 up to last year December. They both took a day off last December before the dinner date and duck the whole day. She also said that they decided to end it and not mess up after but accidentally had sex on the dinner date as well. And the bullcrap business trip was just for two days, they have extended it by three days to spend time together. And she said that she's ready to sacrifice anything to save our marriage. And will go no contact with her boss and quit her job. She said she doesn't love him or anything. She just wanted to have some fun and that's all and said that she was planning to have kids this year and so she won't be able to have fun again like that. So decided to play a little bit before that, etc. And she said that if I'm mad about her Maldives trip with her boss and to fix everything, let's go to the Maldives next week. It's really close to here and just a two-hour cheap flight. I immediately said no, because I know if I go on this trip with her, I would probably change the decision. She said several times that she is ready to do whatever it takes to save our marriage. So I'm pretty solid with my decision to divorce her, but still a part of my heart loves her. I know you guys get probably mad at me for that last time, called me simp doormat guy, etc. But I really ducking loved her hell a lot. It's not easy to wipe out the feelings and love I had for her in all these years. I checked my wife's Google timeline and was shocked where she was spending most of her nights. My wife began acting differently at the end of the summer. We had just gone on a long trip. And while we enjoyed the trip, I thought it was stressful with our two little kids. She came to me around that time and said that she wasn't happy and she didn't know who she was any longer. I admit when she came to me with this, I wasn't the most supportive. I was sort of in shock and reeling as I felt blindsided. After this. 
I said we'd get some counseling and try to work out our issues. During this time, she was staying for drinks at work and then going out to her friend's sister-in-law's house drinking. She'd get home at 2, 3, sometimes 4 in the morning. She also stopped calling me or answering my texts when she was out. I could feel her slipping away and nothing I said or did change it. She acknowledged that I had made positive changes due to counseling but for some reason that got her even angrier at me. This was going on for months and months and every time I tried to talk about us, she just say we're fighting and apparently that was supposed to be the end of the conversation. She was upset that I didn't ask her what our New Year evening plans were until a week before New Year evening. She had made plans without me and didn't tell me until I asked her about it. This was sort of the slap and face wake up call that she was totally checked out. Anyway, we were stuck in this weird limbo since September and small weird things started adding up a text from an unsaved number that was clearly a reply, a selfie from someone that had no business sending her a selfie deleted texts, etc. Enough was enough and I checked her Google timeline places visited and my heart sank. Hours upon hours nights upon nights of spending all her time at this guy's house that is literally 30 years older than her. I know time heals all wounds, but holy crap hurry up already. I'm trying to treat her as nothing but a business acquaintance at this point as we need to co-parent well for our children. She clearly stopped loving and respecting me as a person and as a partner. So why spend any emotional energy on someone like that? That, in short, life is nothing but a constant hop, from pain, to joy, to pain, to joy, and so on. I'm just in the valley right now, and I won't be able to make myself understand why she did what she did. Update. I found out about my wife's affair in early February. Since then we've done some individual counseling some joint, we've made very little progress, if any, she swears she's broken off the affair, but her word is pretty much worthless at this point. Anyway, I was waiting for her to come to her senses or something and was seeing if we could maybe reconcile but I realized that's not going to happen. She was mad at me the other day, because she went with a friend to a lake for the fourth with our kids. It was about 40 minutes away from where I was. I had to pick them up so they could spend some of the day with me. I asked if she'd meet me. And of course, she couldn't because she might not find her way back. The real reason was that she wanted to drink all day. Anyway, I called when I left and there was no answer. I called when I was about 15 minutes away no answer. I called when I got there, no answer. And I called after sitting in the parking lot. 10 minutes or so. I wasn't trying to blow her up. But I literally had no idea where they were, what side of the lake, they were on anything I was just calling to get a heads up to is where I was supposed to be. I was about 10 minutes early, so I didn't sweat it. She finally called back and had no idea where they were parked or where and then eventually said they were in another parking lot. I said okay, hung up and made my way there. As I was driving away, I saw her vehicle. I called her back and said I'm by your truck, so just meet there. Then she got mad that I didn't tell her that right away. Like I knew it before. Anyway, she blames me for anxiety for blowing up her phone. I literally never said a single negative thing or blamed her or yelled at her or anything. I realized then that it doesn't matter what I do, she'll find fault with me. I can't live like this any longer. And I can't live up to some perfect ideal that she requires before giving us another shot. She thinks I have to do all this work on myself. But her problems are all my fault. Her lies and deceit apparently or my fault for breaking her marriage vows or my fault for selfish behavior is my fault. I'm done. Today is the first day of the start of my next chapter in life. Update. So I've signed my agreement with the lawyer and paid my retainer fee. The filing hasn't taken place yet as the lawyer I was initially working with is on vacation until Monday. 
Anyway, a new and unsurprising development took place last night. My wife was showing me a text message and was flipping through screens and whose name do I see a flash on the screen? Per AP, of course. She swore to me she wasn't talking to him any longer. And when I asked her to back up and show me her phone, she obviously refused. Then she had the audacity to gaslight me and tell me that what I saw wasn't true. I asked her to explain how she can tell me how she wasn't talking to him when I saw his name. What do I get? Crickets. She seriously can't bring herself to ever admit anything. I told her that if she had been honest, this would have gone way better. I'm not going to lie. I was fuming mad. I told her she's lucky. I didn't freak out more and put a bullet in his head. I only meant that people commit crimes of passion. And he's lucky. I'm not that insane. But she of course wants to paint it as me making threats. I told her I'm done being nice. And I'm not giving her a cent more than she legally deserves. She's got no integrity and not an honest bone in her body. What the duck happened to my wife? I feel like this guy broke her at a young age. Read my post history. If you want details, and it all came back. It makes sense why she's been so wishy-washy though. Nothing has changed. She's obviously still in a fog and insists a ducking done with all of this. I can't wait until I see her only to exchange the kids update. My D-Day was ages ago, February of 2020. And while COVID dragged everything out, I can see the finish line. We have custody set and we have the financial split set. I feel like I'm coming out on top. She kept the house and since the housing market has been red hot, it shot up in value and basically offset my retirement account. My child support is pretty minimal and I will actually have more money now. I no longer care about what is going on in her life. She threw me in our life away and I won't ever forgive or forget that. The kids are adjusted to everything now and my mental health is in a good spot. So many people have told me how much different I seem. I no longer have the stress of her in my life. Anyway, I am not sure what is next in my life, but I'll just enjoy the ride. It does get better. I was so gutted by everything, but now I feel calm acceptance. We hope you enjoyed this story. Thanks for watching and hope to see you in the next video. And before you go, please be sure to subscribe for more.